diversity in the living world. If you look around, you will see a large variety of living organisms, be it potted plants, insects, birds, your pets, other animals and plants. There are also several organisms that you can't see with your naked eye, but they all are around you. If you were to increase the area that you make observations in the range and the variety of organisms that you see would increase. Obviously, if you were to visit a dense forest, you would probably see a much greater number and kind of living organisms in it. Each different kind of plants and animals or organisms that you see represents a species. The number of species that known as and described range is in between 1.7 to 1.8 million. This refers to biodiversity or the number and the type of organisms present on earth. We should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones and new organisms are continuously being identified. As stated earlier, there are millions of plants and animals in the world. We know that plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place. Even within a country, probably you could recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find a way that and means to talk to each other, to refer to organisms we are talking about. Hence, there is no need to standardize the naming of living organisms, such as the particular organism is known by the same name all over the world. This process is called nomenclature. Obviously, nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism the name is attached to. This is identification. In order to facilitate the study, number of scientists have established the procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organisms. This is acceptable to biologists all over the world for the plants, scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in International Code for Botanical Nomenclature ICBN. You may ask, how are animals named? Animal taxonomists have been evolved internationally called for Geological Nomenclature ICJN. Very important. Repeated questions are here. The scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name. Description of any organism should be enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name. They also ensure that such a name has not be used for any other organism. Biologists universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to know the organisms. Each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet. This system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature. This naming system gives by Carolus Linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world. This naming system using a two word font was found convenient. Let us take example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better. The scientific name of mango is written as Magnifera Indica. Let us see how it is a binomial name. In this name Magnifera represents the genus while the Indica is a particular species or a specific epithet. Other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows. Biological names are generally in Latin, written in italics. They are Latinized or derived from Latin are irrespective of their origin. The first word in biological name represents genus, while the second component denotes the specific epithet. Both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined are printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. The first word 
denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter. It can be illustrated with an example of Magnifera indica. Genus capital letter M Magnifera and while the specific epithet I with a small letter in indica. Name of the author appears after the specific epithet at the end of the biological name is written in an abbreviated form example Magnifera indica Lin. It indicates that this species was first described by Linnaeus. Since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms, it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible. This process is called classification. Classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. For example, we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs, cats or insects, etc. This movement, we use any of these terms, we associate certain characters with the organisms in that group. What image do you see when you think of a dog? Obviously, each one of us will see dogs and not cats. Now, if we were to think of Alsatians, we know what are we talking about. Similarly, suppose we were to say mammals, you would of course think of mammals with external ears and body hairs. Likewise, in plants, if we try to talk of wheat, the picture in each of our minds will be a wheat plants, not a rice or any other plant. Hence, all these dogs, cats, mammals, wheat and rice, plants and animals etc are convenient categories we use to study organisms. The scientific term of these categories is called taxa. Hence, you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different levels. Plants also form a taxa. Wheat is also a taxa. Similarly, animals, mammals, dogs are all taxa. But you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals. Therefore, animals, mammals and dogs represent taxa at different level. Hence, based on characteristics, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa. This process of classification is called taxonomy. External and internal structures along with the structure of the cell and development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of the modern taxonomic studies. Hence characterization, identification and classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy. Taxonomy is not something new. Human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms, particularly with reference to their own use. In earlier days, human beings need to find sources for their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. Hence, earliest classifications were based on use of various organisms. Human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kind of organisms and their diversities but also the relationship among them. This branch of study was referred to as systematics. The word systematics is derived from Latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms. Linnaeus used systema naturae as the title of his publication. The scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification, nomenclature and classification. Systematics takes into account evolutionary relationships between organisms.